Hi, I'm Clinton Crafton, Battalion Chief with Fisher's Fire Department. Welcome to Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. Today we're going to be talking about tunneling extrication and the tunneling maneuvers. When we talk about tunneling, we're generally talking about a plan B. The plan A is going to be the, the hydraulics are at work and then the plan B is already taking place because we might see some difficulty ahead or we might know that we're going to have difficulty. So as we look at this, we're going to start into this with some hand tools and then transition to bring the hydraulics in. You could always use hydraulics up front if this is the plan A, but we're going to start out with hand tools. A couple of things to talk about before we get started. On this particular vehicle, we could pry this trunk with hydraulics, but with the plastic and the, the sheet metal, it's going to bend and, and twist and give us a lot of trouble. So instead, we're going to attack it from the front. We can use hand tools to make these cuts and expose the spring arms to release the, the tension from the trunk. Now, it's critical to understand that when we complete this cut, this is under tension. This is not a controlled metal movement like we like to have, so we want to be cautious about that. We want to make sure that we've got some distance, but it's going to come up and release. At that point, we can snip those arms out of the way, clear the trunk lid out of the way, and then move forward. So we're going to begin attacking this trunk lid. Uh, as you can see, we've got some dotted lines here showing where we're going to expose the actual uh, trunk lip springs. Now, those lift arms are spring-loaded, so they're going to come out with a little bit of uh, force. As we start to make these cuts, we want to be aware of that. It's not a controlled metal release like we typically like to see. So we want to make sure that we're clear of it, and we want to make sure that we've got the, uh, the, the space to let it release. On the right side of the car, we're going to make a relief cut with a chisel so that the sawzall can get started. The sawzall goes to work on the right side, the reciprocating saw, and the air chisel is going to start in on the left side here as we attack this. What we want to do is make an angled cut from the back of the car toward the front um, so that we can get that entire uh, lift arm assembly exposed there so that it can come up and, and release. Now as the Sawzall continues to work, he's getting through both layers at the same time, while our air chisel on the other side is having to go back and, and uh, get through the second layer. As you can see, as we start getting toward the front of the uh, trunk here, the lift arm will actually start to push that sheet metal up and out of the way, and you can see it's starting to create a gap. Uh, just as long as we make sure that our elbow, our forearm, and everything like that's out of the way, we can go ahead and finish that cut and let it spring on up out of the way. Now on the left side, we've got the air chisel working. He's getting through that second layer, and again, as he gets through the second layer, you'll start to see that release, and you'll start to see the separation between the trunk lid and the lift arm. Now what's happening here is it's actually pulling up on the back of the trunk where the trunk lit uh, latch works. And so at this point, we're completely exposed. We're going to go ahead and snip these arms out of the way. We wouldn't have to, but that's a lot of sharp edges right there that we don't want to work around, we don't want to work over. Uh, we brought the hydraulics in here to make a quick cut. We'll show the uh, reciprocating saw on the opposite side. Any, any tool that you've got there that can make the cut is going to work just fine on, on this. Uh, now we see here we've got some wiring. We always want to make sure that we've got a uh, cable cutting tool available to us. Wires run just about every place through the vehicle, and that can really slow our operation down if we've made a cut through all this metal and the only thing holding us up is a little bit of wire. As they peel the trunk lid out of the way, it rolled right off of the, uh, the latch. Uh, sometimes it'll take a little bit of a prying tool. If necessary, you could also cut that with the hydraulics and, and get the trunk lid completely out of the way. We want to make sure we get all the molding out of the way before we start attacking the speaker deck, which is the next step. Uh, this fiberboard or cardboard on the speaker deck peels out of the way real easily. It's either clipped in or glued in, and a standard prying tool will get that right out of the way. What we see when we expose this, the speakers, naturally, and then generally speaking, there's going to be some holes at different points in the speaker deck, and you can really make this kind of a connect the dots to save yourself some time. You want to make sure that you make the opening as large as possible because you're going to have rescuers and a patient coming through there. Uh, in this case, we're going to use the hydraulics on the left side to get a, a starting point for our air chisel. The air chisel can go to work, and we can see that the reciprocating saw is already making good progress on the opposite side. Now one thing we'll note and we'll show here in a second is that the reciprocating saw has to stop and reposition because of the spring arms that run between the two walls of the trunk right underneath the speaker deck. The chisel won't have that problem because he's high enough that he's going over the top of them. But that reciprocating saw will not cut through it and has to reposition to get around those.
as we saw, when the sawzall came through, he had to reposition his blade. As we look here, you can see where he skimmed across these spring arms. These spring arms cause the, the trunk lid to lift up for us, all right? These are rolled steel, and they're very, very hard to cut. The chisel didn't have any problem because he skimmed right over the top of them in his cut. But we can't use the sawzall or the chisel either one to cut these. They're going to bounce around. The tool's just going to get beat up. It's not a great idea to use the cutters on this, the hydraulic cutters either, because we can actually nick the blade. They're that tough. So instead, what we'll do, once we've got this exposed, is we'll bring a prying tool in and release the bar that way. Now, real quick, we want to point out, we stopped at this point making this cut to expose this. We could have slipped the seats forward and gone ahead and finished the cut, but we're going to show that next. So we're going to take these arms out of the way and uh, give us the, the full access that we need. Once released, they just fall right out and can be removed from the trunk. So after we've got the speaker deck out of the way, we have to go ahead and finish that cut on down through the back wall behind the seats. It depends on the make, model, and year of the car. Some of these walls go all the way down to the floor pan, and some of them are a quarter of the way down to halfway down. In this case, it's about a quarter of the way down that it rolls over. Easy cut for the reciprocating saw, not so easy for an air chisel because of the different layering. So in this case, we brought the hydraulics in for the left side cut. The other thing to note here is the seats themselves. These seats are releasable, and there's a button on the top. They'll, it'll be on the top of the seat or the, the side of the seat, and these seats can fold forward. Sometimes the seat back does not fold forward. Usually those are held in by spring clips, and they're pretty easy to pry out as long as you can identify them just through a little bit of spreading and, and pushing with your hand tool. Once this is all out of the way, we'll move on to actually removing the back seat. Again, if it's held in by clips, once those clips are released, you can pull the back seat straight up and out. In this case, they hinge because they lay forward, so we're going to have to attack these at the hinges. We're going to spread on this one, and that'll, that'll tear that seat uh, right out at the hinge. We just want to make sure that we're clear on the inside so that there's nobody in the way. We can also use the cutters, um, and you could also attack it with the air chisel if that was the tool you had. On the right side, we're going to use the cutters, just to show the different options. Again, pretty thin sheet metal down there on these hinges holding things in place on the back seat. Now with the back seat out of the way, we can move forward to attack the front seat. One thing that's true with every tunneling operation is sharp edges. Now that we've got this exposed all the way out, we've ta even taken the bottom of the seat out so that we can attack the front seats to get the driver or the passenger out of the vehicle, we've got a lot of sharp edges here that our rescuers and eventually our victim are going to be transferring through. So we want to make sure that we protect ourselves from that in some way. We've got some heavy rubber pieces here that we can wrap on there. You could use some old fire hose, some duct tape, whatever it might be just to make sure that we're very aware of these sharp edges and careful. As we attack the front, front seats, we want to make sure of a couple of things. Number one, we're not trying to cut that hinge. That's uh, heavy rolled steel and it's going to be a real difficult cut. If nothing else, it's going to cause a lot of twist and we don't have room for that there. We want to make sure that we expose so we know exactly where we are cutting and we really have to be careful. Anytime we're using tools this close to a patient, that we know exactly where the patient is, exactly where our tool is, and that we're getting some kind of hard protection between the patient and the tool at all times. The first step is we want to expose the back of the seat. This particular seat had zippers that are easy to, to tear out of the way and remove if you can't get to them. And uh, we're just exposing the, the metal frame members of the seat back itself. Now that we can see where the, the seat frame members are, again, putting hard protection between the patient and the back of the seat. And we'll have somebody working from the window side with the patient as well to make sure that we're not 
I'm getting too close to the patient. We're going to cut that frame member of the seat back itself. Attacking from the outside in on this works better just because it gives us better exposure. There's not a lot of uh, body molding. Uh, in this case, we've got a center hump in there that's going to block us a little bit. So it lets us know what we're cutting into before we attack the, the more difficult side. Now again, we're going to have sharp edges here. So as we remove the seat back and get ready to package our patient, we need to be very uh, cognizant of that and make sure that we're protecting our patient at all times. Just as with having wire cutters is important on any kind of extrication because there's wires hidden just about any place we want to cut, same holds true for a good sharp knife. Whether it be the fabric that's holding us back or the seat belt itself, we need to make sure that we're, we're ready to be able to attack that without having to run back to the truck for another tool. So today we reviewed tunneling operations on a passenger vehicle, all the way from the trunk removal, through the speaker deck and the back seats, all the way up to the driver's seat. We want to thank Hamacho, our sponsor for this uh, training minute. I'm Battalion Chief Clint Crafton with Advanced Rescue Solutions, and this has been Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. Mm -hmm.